Spick and Span, Lillian Gilbreth's Wonder Kitchen by Monica Cooling. Lillian and Frank Gilbreth lived in a large house in Montclair, New Jersey with their 11 children. Every Sunday, the family loaded up the car and went for a drive. Peep Frank loved to blast the electric horn. Ooga! People stopped and stared. Eleven children, imagine. Not too much horn, Lillian would say. She was a shy woman. <laughs> Lillian Moeller Gilbreth was born in 1878 in Oakland, California. Her wealthy family had a mansion and servants, but Lillian did not want a pampered life. Unlike most girls of her time, she decided to go to university. Lillian wanted a life of adventure and challenge. When she married Frank Gilbreth in 1904, that's exactly what she got. Lillian and Frank were efficiency experts. They showed factory workers how to get the most done in the least amount of time. Frank thought there was one best way to do every job. Lillian thought people did their best when their workplace was comfortable and they enjoyed what they were doing. Lillian was not only an industrial engineer, but a psychologist too. The Gilbreths used a new invention, the motion picture camera, to film a worker on the job. Then they studied the film to see if the worker was making unnecessary movements. They discovered that cutting out wasteful actions was the way to get more done and be less tired. Lillian and Frank were efficient at home as well, running their house on the Gilbreth system. Charts listed each child's work, brushing their teeth, taking a bath, or making a bed. When the children completed a task, they placed a tick mark on the chart. Once a week, the Gilberts held family meetings. At one meeting, William piped up, I want a dog. Never, shouted Frank, dogs are messy. But Lillian said calmly, it would be good for the children to take care of an animal and think of those happiness minutes. The family voted, Frank lost. Soon, there was a dog at 68 Eagle Rock Way. <coughs> By 1924, Lillian and Frank's business, Gilbreth Inc., was famous in the motion studies field. Frank was invited to give a speech at a conference in Europe. While he was at the train station picking up his ticket, he phoned Lillian to check on his passport. She put the phone down and went to find it. When Lillian returned, there was no one on the line. Frank had collapsed in the telephone booth at the Lackawanna train station. He died of a heart attack. Lillian now faced a mountain of worry. How would she bring up 11 children on her own? How could she earn enough money to pay for their food, clothing, and education? Relatives offered to take in one child, maybe two. Lillian's mother offered her home to the entire family, so Lillian called a family meeting. Shall we live in California with Grandma, she asked. The voice, votes came in. No! They would all stay together in the big house in Montclair, New Jersey. A few days after Frank's funeral, Lillian was on a ship bound for Europe. She decided to give Frank's speech at the conference so their work in the motion studies field would not be forgotten. When she returned, Lillian faced another problem. The Gilbreths needed money. Lillian sold the car and let the cook go. It was time that Lillian and her two older daughters, Ernestine and Martha, learned how to cook. Lillian needed work but the factories wouldn't hire a female industrial engineer, even one with 20 years experience. 
Every day, William met Lillian at the door and asked, did you find a job yet, mother? One happy day, Lillian replied, yes, I did. Macy's, the big department store in the country, had hired Lillian to improve its cash room operations. In the 1920s, most stores did not keep money in cash registers. They used a compressed air chute system to collect the money in one place. The money was put into containers and shot like spitballs through a straw, through the air chute to the cash room upstairs. Right away, Lillian saw that Macy's cash room was noisy and poorly lit. The clerks were sitting in uncomfortable chairs. Soon, Lillian turned all that around and Macy's was a happy client. At home, Lillian, Ernestine, and Martha were cooking up a storm, dashing to and fro. They kept getting in each other's way. Suddenly, Lillian scraped her fingers on a grater. Ow! she cried. Looking around her old-fashioned kitchen, she mused. The kitchen is the heart of the home. It should run like clockwork. She decided to bring her space-saving, step-saving ideas from the factory into her own home. Lillian cut open a brown paper bag and sketched a layout for a kitchen that would be both practical and efficient. Lillian's kitchen design was the first to use the circular approach to arranging work surfaces, appliances, and sinks. She made sure that the appliances were steps from each other and that the cupboards were easy to reach. Working in a kitchen was less tiring if everything was close at hand. It was 1927. Lillian Gelbreth had reinvented herself. Soon, the Brooklyn Borough Oil Company, Gas Company, sorry, hired her to improve kitchen designs. Lillian was ready. She interviewed over 4,000 women to find out what didn't work in their kitchens. Armed with information, she designed kitchens that were organized, efficient, and comfortable to work in. One day, Lillian and Martha were in the kitchen making Frank's beloved apple cake. Martha was beating the batter by hand. This work is so tiring, mother, she said. Lillian stopped to think. Why can't beaters do their work on their own? She got busy designing an electric mixer. No more aching arms. Lillian began to wonder about other inefficient kitchen items. For example, the garbage can. It would be so much easier if you didn't have to bend to lift the lid, she thought. So Lillian invented a garbage can with a lid that opened when you stepped on the foot pedal. Next came the refrigerator. Lillian invented the compartments in the door to store things like butter, eggs, and cheese. Lillian even designed a desk for the homemaker to sit at while making up her weekly schedules and paying her bills. This innovation, called the Gilbreth Management Desk, was exhibited at A Century of Progress International Exposition in Chicago in 1933. Lillian Gilbreth was a pioneer in ergonomics, the study of workplace design. Her ergonomic approach to kitchen design always kept the worker in mind. Lillian Gilbreth lived a challenging life filled with children, work, and many happiness minutes. She was the first woman elected to the National Academy of Engineering in 1965. And in 1984, the first woman psychologist to have a US postage stamp issued in her honor. Lillian was even the subject of two movies, Cheaper by the Dozen and Bells on Their Toes, which showed how the boisterous Gilbreth clan lived. During her lifetime, Lillian Gilbreth was an efficiency expert, an industrial engineer, an inventor, a psychologist, 
an author, and a professor. But she always said that her favorite role was that of a mother.